Hey everybody, I'm Scott Stanton, the original Tombstone Tourist, and you'll find all my great stories at thetombstonetourist.com. Today, we're in Salem, Massachusetts, and if you think we're going to talk about witches, you are absolutely correct. Right behind me is Pope Street, and up this very street, 19 convicted witches during the 1692 witch trial were on their way to allegedly Gallows Hill. Now, all the tourists and their tour books will go up to Gallow Hill, take pictures, and think that's where the original hanging tree. They could not be more wrong because here on Pope Street, I am at the original hanging tree. This is known as Proctor's Ledge, and this is where 19 innocent people were convicted during the witch hysteria in 1692. This site was discovered just five years ago through meticulous research, including eyewitness reports from the people that lived around here that watched the hangings from their home. So don't be a tourist. When you come to Salem, Massachusetts, come to the right site. Oh, since we're here, would you like to go see the cemetery where a family that started this whole wish hysteria is buried together? I know I would. Come follow me. Hey there. Okay, so we just came from Proctor's Ledge over in Salem, Mass. And now we're in Danvers, Massachusetts, next town over, and we're in the Putnam Family Burial Ground. And if you can guess it, this is where the Putnam family is buried. Now, who are the Putnams? The Putnams were one of the families that instigated the Salem witch trial. The father, Thomas, his uh, brother-in-law uh, went with the Porter family and combined their assets. And that angered him to no end. And there was all this inner rivalry, so he started telling his daughter and his wife that they see witches, their neighbors are practicing witchcraft. Next thing leads to another, and you have Thomas Putnam testifying against over 40 of his neighbors and town folks, and his daughter was one of the three little girls that claimed all these people were witches, and consequently, 19 of them hung at Proctor's Ledge, and Numerous other people were in prison. Some died in prison. One was crushed to death. It was a horrible, horrible part of American history. Now you're probably wondering which one of these graves they're buried in. They're not. They're buried over here. This mound right behind me is the final resting place of Thomas, his wife Anne, and Anne Jr., the little girl that uh, testified 62, 63 times against their neighbors. Now, I find it interesting that in the Putnam family burial ground, they're the only ones that are unmarked, but for obvious reasons. Interesting to note though, Ann Putnam Jr. finally apologized, but she would only do it if it would allow her back into the church. And so the church said, yeah, we'll accept your apology. So it was kind of a half-hearted uh, apology. But none of the other families or girls apologized. And it happened so fast. It was literally just a matter of six, eight months that the Salem witch trials and the, and the executions happened. And the reason it stopped so quickly is word got down to the governor of Massachusetts and all these people were being convicted on spectral evidence. They're saying, oh, they were flying in the sky as a witch, or they were practicing this, or I saw them turn, you know, this uh, uh, John into a goblin, you know, or whatever they were saying. That's called spectral evidence. And the governor said, no more spectral evidence, stop it. And the town folks said, uh, okay, we'll stop doing that. And it ended overnight. Now, the scars have lasted, uh, uh, 
hundreds and hundreds of years and will for in the near future. But for these people, let's uh, leave some flowers. For, <laughs> I'm kidding, don't leave flowers for them. These are truly nasty, horrible people. Hey, if you want to find out more about Salem Witch Trials and all that other great stuff, come to my website, The Tombstone Tourist. I'm Scott Stanton, The Tombstone Tourist. Have yourself a great day.